How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Chainsaw Man Volume 2. Once again, I think this is another really good volume. If you remember my review of Volume 1, I'd said I heard a bit about it, and I was quite pleasantly surprised with the book. Really good, hyper-violent action insanity. Chainsaw Man himself is a really cool design, but also following the very human character of Dingy and seeing a person really put down and oppressed by the world trying to just claw out a little bit of a life for himself. In this volume, the world continues to expand. We see how human uh, devil hunters without Dingy's power uh, fight devils, which it's an interesting concept that gives each one a new and unique power, uh, but we also get to find out a little bit more about the world and how it works. Uh, this is kind of a transition volume uh, in Japan when they serialize manga. They don't super often think about how it's going to go into volumes and instead just pace out the story for what seems natural overall. So in turn, this volume we open up finishing the Chainsaw vs. Bat arc, and then we get a little bit of downtime between missions, and then we're off to this really cool hotel adventure. I'm not sure how much I want to say about that because it's towards the end, but it is a really cool visual and ends on a really good cliffhanger that uh, really wants me to check out the next volume, you know? But I also want to say about that transition point in the middle where they hang out for a little bit. One thing I really do like there is it talks about the deal that Dingy and Power made where if he freed her cat from the Bat Devil, um, what he would get in return getting to second base and he uh, gets to think about the repercussions of this deal and it goes in a strange and different way that you may not have suspected and it really actually winds up saying something about romance. I mean, Dingy agreeing to the deal anyway, you can say, oh, he's just a, a pervert character, and maybe at parts he is, sure, uh, but it approaches this character in an honest way where you see, you know, how little he has and how happy he'd be with anything and reaching and grasping for more, but him, you know, thinking about the repercussions of this and another character comes in and gives him a bit of a speech about romance that actually has a lot going on with it but also you can see that this is a uh, another vice that might be used against him to hold him in place and control him and I really do like how I interesting this is you know him wanting to get more and more in the world but having to question the sources he gets it from, aren't they just trying to control and manipulate him? It's really interesting, and it is something I'm curious to see how well it plays out, how much certain characters really do like him, and how much they might just be evil. It is lots of interesting stuff going on. Another good volume. It expands the world. It moves on through a new mission. And it's always got some interesting ideas, in particular all these crazy devil designs. It's really cool. Uh, without further ado, if you do want to see more of this book, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera. I'll show you guys a little bit of the story, a little bit of the art. I'll try to be avoiding major spoilers. I'll talk openly about Volume 1, but I'll try not to go terribly far. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. All right, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Chainsaw Man Volume 2. Let's go ahead and bring this closer to the camera. This time around, we have a nice portrait of Power on the front cover. She is on like a blood scythe. Uh, she tends to use a uh, big hammer instead, but you know what? It's cool for the front and against a nice uh, teal backdrop. The green of the two is the color they chose for the side and the spines I noticed are actually not the front cover but the back cover 
and on the back we get her again against pink and she has her cat Meowy there who can just barely peek into the spine as well and yeah um, there is a few scenes uh, flashbacks with power and her cat and we find out that uh, before she joined the human world she it wasn't really a fan of clothes the 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 panels themselves aren't super explicit or anything, but uh, I don't think YouTube would like them, so we won't <laughs> we won't look at any of those. Uh, 9.99 USA rated T plus, and we do get the book synopsis on the back there. Anyway, cracking it open, we get the Puchita sketch, Tatsuki Fujimoto. And his quote this time is, I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's kind of funny. The first one he just said, I love chainsaws. And it appears that in all the rest of them, he's kind of doing movie recommendations. So we'll get to see what other movies he likes in the coming volumes. And then we get a little bit of a biography about him below that. Then we get the cover image. We get to see him and Power eating a bunch of noodles. And Chainsaw Man 2, Chainsaw vs. Bat. All the volumes are titled after the first chapter that they collect. We can see the chapters here. We have 9 through 16 this time around. So a little bit more as far as number of chapters. But the first one had chapter 1, and that was extra long. So it's about the same length. Uh, but before that, we actually do get a character guide and a previously on, which I really do like. One page devoted to Denji and Puchita, and there's him as a human, and him with his chainsaw devil head. Uh, but we get all the other characters. Makima, Aki, Power, little picture of Miaoi there, and the Bat Devil. And we get a nice previously on, and I always want to give major pros to a comic that puts in a previously on. I read this right after part one, but not everybody's going to do that, especially if you read them right when they come out. It's a little hard to remember sometimes after like two months, so thank you for the previously on. Anyway, after that, let's talk a bit about the story. Now, I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, and I by no means want this video to be a substitute for reading the book. I'll show you guys a little bit of some of the plot elements. I'll try to be avoiding the major spoilers, and I'll show you guys just a little of the story, a little of the art, and I'll try not to go too far. But of course, we have to open up with Chainsaw vs. Bat, and he's out there fighting the Bat Devil, and I mean, that's just a cool comic panel right there, the two flying through the air. Anyway, Bat Devil's gonna get his arm chopped off again, and now he's right back to square one. Uh, they land in this building when Denji tells this random lady to get out of there, and the Bat Devil is like, you're a devil, why do you care about humans? And we get this scene later on in the battle, where the Bat Devil picks up this random guy's car and is throwing it at Denji. And he's like, you won't be able to cut through it. You don't want to kill this guy. Luckily, it turns out his chainsaws can retract. But he says, I don't care about this random guy. And that kind of puts dingy's character into perspective because again he's not a pure 100 percent hero he sees someone who might get hurt he'll say yeah get out of here but he's not gonna you know like if the bat devil's killing someone and he can't do anything about it he's more quick to accept that you know so it does show a room for his character's growth but yeah you're gonna see some really cool moments during this fight and you do get to slug it out. Now, this arc will end relatively early in the book, and we'll, we'll get a bit of a transitional period. There is one part of this book that I do really like, where he does try to rush into battle a little too soon, and he just doesn't have enough blood, and he just gets the stump of a chainsaw sticking out of his head. That was just such a great moment there. Uh, but we do also get during the downtime in him talking and wondering about romance and we do get a bit of a conversation once 
Makima notices that something's up with him, and it is a really interesting conversation about romance, but also, man, I don't know if he can trust this girl because she really just needs Denji for her power, so it is something that does have some valid points and stuff to think about, but at the same time, how much is he just being manipulated? And yeah, you really do see the poor guy just trying to want and get something out of this world, but after that, we'll be introduced to what seems like is going to be the next major threat of this book, and that'll be the gun devil. You don't see him, but it's clear he's very powerful. He only shows up for a few seconds and can kill tens of thousands of people, so it's something you definitely need to figure out. But where in the world is he? Well, there is an interesting solution to that, is there are some scraps of his flesh that look like bullets, and the thing is, they actually will be drawn to one another, so if they collect enough of them, then they'll start to go to the direction of where the gun devil's hiding. The only problem is that these bullets, if they're fed to a devil, will make it stronger, so most of the remaining pieces out there are in the bellies of extra strong devils there. I do like, see it's just a little fish devil, but it had the bullet in it. So, it is setting up a plot. I'm hoping this doesn't get to be too battle grindy later, because we are clearly working towards a huge villain that would be really hard to stop. But it is an interesting idea and a clear goal and sense of progression. You also do get to meet some more devil hunters. You get this girl, who is like another team lead, who, who once again will be flirty, but she is kind of at the same level as Aki there. You get this other girl who's really scared and afraid but talented, and we'll find out why she joined in a minute. And we also get this guy that's a bit of a another nemesis to Denji there, who thinks that he should shapen up and be straight, but uh, he's, yeah, a little bit of an annoying character that... I don't know if he'll change later on, or if he's destined to be a red shirt. We'll have to see. But anyway, they get reports that something is going on in this hotel. The bullet reacts a little bit, so there's probably another piece inside. And they're going to go in, and I don't want to spoil. Again, I'm not trying to spoil everything in the book. I just want to talk and react to it. Uh, I'll probably talk more about the setup and everything later in volume three but i really do like this weird thing you know they go into a hotel that's already a cool situation you see the design of the devil there it's really weird and then you also don't know what power it's going to have so it's a good bit of a wild card and i really did like seeing this weird strange power almost a bit Twilight zone there, and how in the world do you defeat that? And then plus ending on a really cool cliffhanger. Can't wait for Volume 3. Overall, definitely recommend it. To everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my manga playlist, where you can see the first volume of this, I also have a review for Orochi and a whole ton of Junji Ito, but I am looking to read more and add more to this playlist going forward, so hopefully there'll be a ton of cool stuff in there later. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.